What is up everybody, it is I, Ronan, and today I am coming at you with a learning how to play for the new Gaia archetype. So uh, if you're unaware, Gaia the Fierce Knight is an older card that recently got some new support that essentially turns it into a this monster turbo deck. Um, the deck is cool, it's a lot of legacy stuff, and if you're into that, and I know a lot of players are, uh, then I think you would enjoy it. I personally was not a huge fan of this one, though. But, uh, let's go ahead and get right into the deck profile, shall we? Uh, starting with our main deck monster lineup, we have one Soldier Gaia the Fierce Knight, three Charging Gaia the Fierce Knight, three Gaia the Magical Knight, which always counts as a Gaia the Fierce Knight card, three Curse of Dragon Fire, three Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragon, Free Origin Gaia the Fierce Knight, two Envoy of Chaos, and free Bombarding Catapult Turtle. Uh, so we're going to talk about the general main play you want to do with this deck, just uh, right off the bat, and that is Gaia the Magical Knight into Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragon. Uh, so Gaia the Magical Knight, if you control no monsters or your only your opponent controls monsters, can be summoned from your hand without tributing. And if it's normal or special summon, you can special summon a level 5 dragon from your hand or graveyard in defense position as a hard once per turn. So this can lead you into Curse of Dragonfire or Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragon. Uh, Curse of Dragonfire is pretty simple. When it's special summoned, you can pop a spell trap. It also lets you use itself as poly on the field. Uh, however, the new one, Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragon, does a few things. First off, whenever it's normal or special, it lets you add a spell trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lets Gaia the Dragon Champion in its text. If it's sent to the graveyard, it lets you target a Gaia the Dragon Champion you control to negate the effects of all other face-up monsters on the field with less attack or equal. And uh, that lasts till the end of turn. And I'm guessing you can sort of see where this deck uh, goes from here. It is all about this card, Gaia the Magical Dragon Champion, uh, which becomes Gaia the Dragon Champion while it's on the field. Um, it has a few effects. It requires Ga Gaia the Fierce Knight monster as well as a level 5 or more dragon. So the idea is that summon Gaia the Magical Knight, summon Cursed Dragon, Curse of Dragon, search Spiral Fusion, the unique fusion spell, summon Gaia the Magical Dragon Champion, or Sky Galloping Gaia the Dragon Champion if you're feeling spicy for whatever reason. I don't know why you're feeling spicy right now, but apparently you are. Uh, but let's go ahead and go over Spiral Fusion just to sort of finish off the main combo here. Uh, Spiral Fusion is the archetypal fusion. It lets you fusion summon a Dragon Fusion from the extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. And if it's Gaia the Dragon Champion, it gains 2600 attack and can make up to 2 attacks on monsters during each battle phase. This is relevant because of Gaia the Magical Dragon Champion's effect. Uh, it has two effects. So first off, during the main phase, as a quick effect, it lets you target one other card on the field. This loses 2600 attack, and if it does, it destroys that target. And when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can have it gain 2600 attack. So you obviously use Spiral Fusion to get the 2600 attack, because this counts as Gaia the Dragon Champion. So you have a disruption ready to go, or a big, big monster. And uh, the majority of the rest of the deck is just various ways to get to that. Uh, Charging Gaia the Fierce Knight is able to normal summon itself without tribute, so it's another option you have for getting a Gaia on the field. Uh, Origin Gaia the Fierce Knight is just Gaia the Magical Knight with more steps, so I guess... Keep that in mind moving forward, but, um, you know, it lets you set up your graveyard with level 5 or higher monsters, and it can reset attacks to their original. Uh, so if your Gaia the Magical Dragon Champion is at, like, 0 attack or lower than 2600, this can get it right back up and feeling good. So that's pretty decent. Uh, Envoy of Chaos does a similar thing, except only with your opponent's monster. Uh, you discard it, and it basically is a mini honest for 1500 attack for any Gaia the Fierce Knight monster. And, um, yeah, it switches your opponent's attack monster's attack points back to their original if they have been increased. Uh, that is relevant at times. So it's a good way to beat over things if you can't really get 
much on the field, but it's definitely the most replaceable card of the bunch here. Uh, and we have Bombarding, Bombarding Catapult Turtle, which lets you trade a monster to special summon Gaia the Fierce Knight or level 5 or higher dragon from your hand or deck. Uh, it's a hard once per turn, so it's kind of like a lone fire blossom for the deck. So it's a good way to get to things. Now for our only real um, monster one of Soldier Guy the Fierce Knight. Uh, it special summons itself as a quick effect from the hand by tributing a dragon fusion. Um, and when it's special summon, it lets you target an attack position monster on the field to change to defense. And you can tribute it to add a level 7 or higher warrior monster from your deck to your hand, except for itself. So it basically sets you up with any of your other Gaia the Fierce Knight monsters, except for Origin. Uh, so yeah, the deck is pretty heavy about going second, and it's all about making Gaia the Dragon Champion. Uh, beyond that, we just have various ways to get to that. We have Lightning Storm at free, because this is a hard go second deck, and we really want to hit that. Uh, we've got Reinforcements of the Army, because who doesn't like searching warriors? Uh, Pot of Extravagance, because most of the things we run are at 3 or at 2. We do not fear using it, especially since the only monster we really care about keeping is Gaia the Magical Dragon Champion. Terraforming, to search our rotas, uh, as well as the field spell. I already went over Spiral Fusion. Call by the Grave, to deal with hand traps. One Spiral Spear Strike, which makes it so that if a Gaia the Fierce Knight, or Swift Gaia the Fierce Knight, or Gaia the Dragon Champion, uh, you control it, dice it. Defense position monster, you can inflict piercing, and if Guy the Dragon Champion inflicts battle damage with this effect, you get to draw two, then discard one. So, um, it's good for Sky Galloping Gaia, the Dragon Champion, which when summoned searches it and, um, went to collision attacks on opponent's monster, you can change its battle position. So, the idea is you summon it, get Spiral Spear Strike, and then you are able to deal free piercing damage for draws and stuff. So, it's fine at one this is also probably a cuttable part of the deck i was just trying to make this as inclusive as possible but um it very rarely comes up that this ends up being helpful uh now for our final cards we have gateway to chaos because when it's activated you can add a uh gaia the fierce knight monster from your deck to your hand so that is very helpful because that does search your gaia the magical knight and then we have the other field spell, Charging Gaia. Uh, it does a few things, mostly with Gaia the Dragon Champion, because that's all this deck cares about having, and all it cares about you having. Uh, when it's in your monster zone, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects during the battle phase, and during the main phase, you can activate one of these effects. You either search a Gaia the Fierce Knight monster by revealing a level 5 dragon, or you do the opposite searching the level 5 dragon by revealing a Gaia the Fierce Knight monster. Uh, so it's searching, it's not awful, uh, I mean that's all I can really say about it, it's not awful, it's fine, I guess, it's, I mean the battle phase shutdown thing is cool, but all in all it's just not super helpful. Like, again, you could probably Run it at 2 by taking out the Spiral Spear Strike as well as Sky Galloping Gaia, the Dragon Champion, if you care less about that draw power. You'd also probably remove the Envoys of Chaos for two more copies uh, if you wanted to. It's just actually probably a smarter thing to do, but I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I mean, I guess I could go over the rest of the extra deck real fast, but you already know what it does. Nightmare Package Removal bore load because sometimes stealing monsters is okay. Um, side deck, uh, this is kind of a thing, like, these are mostly things I considered running. Some of them I do seriously have in the side deck. Obviously, Gamma Sil for Kaijus. Uh, Phantasme, possibly an interesting choice for a hand trap with this deck because it requires level 5 or higher dragons for the, uh, some of the fusions, like example, Sky Galloping. Uh, so this does meet the qualifications for a lot of Gaia stuff, it being a dragon and all. But um, not everyone runs Link monsters. They're certainly a bit less common. Uh, so, you know, run at your own peril, I guess. But 
if it, it, it's helpful if you have it I some of the time. So take that how you will, I guess. Uh, we have an extra Envoy of Chaos, just in case we ever feel like having even more attack. Free Twin Twisters for that extra bit of spell trap removal. Free Blizzard to deal with quick clay spells. One extra Charging Gaia, just in case you decide that you like to search. And one Red Reboot in order to just um, uh, deal with things, you know? Uh, traps and stuff. Oh, hey, I accidentally have it set to in A. Okay, there we go. The ban list is back to the proper thing. I have a buddy, and he likes to test with a lot of OCG stuff. So I usually have it set to NA. But that's right, so you guys can all see this now. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much the deck. Um, I thought it was kind of boring, but I guess if you just like making a big monster that hits things hard, it's fine. It's good for nostalgia's sake. But uh, yeah, if you're new here, we just... Uh, Look at a couple replays, I show you what I liked, what I didn't like, the combos and plays and such, and the deck's strengths as well as its weaknesses. But uh, yeah, all that being said, I'll see you guys in the first replay. Alright, welcome to the first replay with LTX, we are Tab as usual. And usually I go over the sort of strong replay first, but um, I don't know, I kind of want to prepare you guys exactly for what you're dealing with if you choose to try to do this and just what what you're gonna do so we are going second which is preferable for us and we are playing against a time thief uh time thief traps we're playing against time thief traps so you know this is gonna be a fun game just look at that list mm, just one silent boots one boots. We don't need two. We only need one boots. But uh, yeah, let's go and get right into the replay with our opponent who will be going first. Uh, so he's gonna. St oh wow, that is very loud. Um, very sorry about that. Uh, so our opponent is going to go ahead and be able to get off their uh, regulator to make the redoer setting heavy storm duster, solemn judgment, another, and retrograde. So we knew about the retrograde, so that is what I was trying to play around in my turn, but, um, yeah. Was not aware of all the rest of this stuff. However, it is now back to us, and our opponent is going to steal the top card. We are going to go ahead and activate the extravagance, knowing it will bait out the retrograde, because I thought at that point we could just get our searches as regular with Gateway to Chaos. Uh, so we activate Gateway to Chaos, it gets Heavy Storm Dusted. Gateway to Chaos can't be activated um, twice. If I just normal summon this, I could take less damage potentially. But at the same time, I didn't want to lose it because at the moment, it's kind of one of my only play starters. And now that I know he's running stuff like Heavy Storm Duster, I don't know if my other Gateway of Chaos will go through. So he is going to go ahead and get that draw. Surging the boots. Uh, making Rhoda dead. Very cool, dude. Very cool. But he is going to go ahead and set um, a manhunt. Uh, oh, no, wait. He had the Armageddon Knight. That's my bad. I am sorry, dude. I misjudged you. You had two targets. Very good. Very good gameplay. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so he's just going to summon the... Uh, Armageddon Knight, get the bezel ship effect, go ahead and get the Perpetua on the field. So, you know, you've got the um, uh, super combo here. Uh, he's going to go ahead and attach a trap for that spinning potential. However, he's going to draw a card again, and then it's back to us. He's getting the Bombarding Turtle. Uh, takes our Magical Guy, which sucks. Uh, so he is going to go ahead and get more things on the field. And under his monster, we activate Gateway to Chaos. Judgmented, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to summon Bombardment Turtle, because I thought, hey, I still have Bombardment Turtle. I can summon Gaia the Magical Knight, and then I can get Cursed Dragon, and then I can just attack for some big damage. Um, that didn't work. Uh, so yeah, now our opponent's stealing our Lightning Storm again. Uh... Which, looking at his hand, 
actually could have done some work for us. Um, it actually could have helped a lot. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and perpetua and stuff and then just attack for game. Uh, yep, and that's game. Well, not quite game. He still has the bezel ship stuff. Uh, because he stole our lightning storm again. We have not had lightning storm once, and we are gonna have it. And then redoers just out here like, no, you can't out my board. And that's the worst thing because lightning storm would actually like semi out this board. But it's it's whatever. We're just going to try to summon our fierce our charging Gaia to attack into the silent boots. He spins it back, obviously. And now he just attacks for game. Now, ladles and gentlemen, I want you to tell me the problem with this deck. I will give you a few seconds here to think. You know, I'm not going to talk in this time. Uh, just take your time. Think about what the problem you noticed here was. Have you thought about it? I'm going to assume you thought about it. We couldn't get to our freaking Gaia, the magical dragon champion, whatever. And that is all this deck does. It summons Gaia, the magical dragon champion, whatever, and sits on it and hopes it can kill through that. And sometimes it does, which we'll see in the next replay. But a lot of the times, it just doesn't. Like, it just can't play through anything if it's summons and searches get interrupted or if the opponent has two negates you can't do much of anything because you need those searches you need those things and look i i would forgive this deck for being bad i would i've played plenty of bad decks and had a lot of fun with them in the past what i can't forgive is that this deck is boring cannot forgive that i like, if you're going to be bad, at least do it in a way that I will remember. Like, give me... I don't know. What's a deck I don't like? Um, prank Kids. Okay, give me Prank Kids. Okay, I don't like Prank Kids. I've been on the record saying that many a times. I don't think it's a good deck. I really don't. But at least they're interesting. Okay, at least they do a lot of freaking things before they do. Or even TGs have that. But I've gone... I went on a rant there. I'm sorry. This deck makes me so upset. But now you're going to see what the deck looks like when it's working. And you're going to see what it does... And you are going to be as underwhelmed as I was. I will see you guys there. Welcome to the second and final replay with Player. You can't see my name really, but it is Tab still. And he is playing a Shadow, a Shadow Invoked thing. Um, a cool deck. But let's go ahead and write it. We are going second, which again is ideal. And we've basically opened up with every card we need to conquer the universe. So let's just get right into it. Uh, so our opponent is going to start by doing some invoked things. Activate the meltdown, search the Alistair. Alistair gets invocation, making the Al Mirage, which will take him into the Link Monster, like, life. That Cyber Slight thing that invoked goes into to get the materials from Mechaba. Uh, then they activate the Shed Owl Fusion for the Construct. Uh, Construct is going to go ahead and search the Wendy. Uh, sending the Shadow Res, making Winda. Wendy got sent to the graveyard, so it's going to go ahead and set the Ariel. Setting the Super Poly with no cards in hand, but I guess it's fine as a bluff, so oh well. Uh, and then it is on to us. So, thankfully, we are in a good position here. We activate Terraforming to search the Charging Gaia, because we already have all the Gaia monsters we need. Activate it. Uh, go ahead and reveal to search another Gaia. Then we are going to activate Spiral Fusion because Winda only allows for one special summon per turn. 
uh, then dra Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragons going to negate effects as well as power things up. We can summon our Charging Guy without tributing. And from there, we just are able to attack for big damage and win. And that's what this deck does. This is this deck going off. It just attacks twice, and hopefully your opponent doesn't have disruption. So in review, I don't like this deck. I think it's boring, and I don't think it's good. But if you are a player who plays for nostalgia, nothing wrong with that. I would just understand that that is what some players love about the game. Then I think you will get a nice little rush of it from playing this deck. With all of that being said, let me know what you think of the deck what decks I should play next, and if there's any ways I could make this even the slightest bit interesting. Not in a way that you just throw in like a random card to make it interesting. No, like an interesting interaction or play or literally anything you could do with this deck. I would appreciate you doing that for me. But yeah, like if you liked, comment if you had something to say, and subscribe if you want some more. This has been Ronan signing off.